Hi ladies, good morning. It is Sarah Shipton here from Scrapbooking with Sarah. I'm coming live to you on Tuesday, September 19 with this week's scrapbooking challenge. Don't you just love heritage photos? And the paper collection that we're working with today is going to suit your heritage photos perfectly. If you've got some heritage photos lying around in drawers and packs and boxes, then you are really going to be inspired by this week's challenge. <clears throat> now, I did skip ahead with our Make It From The Heart Volume 3 pattern book. With our weekly challenges, I pick a pattern from this book each week. And I've skipped ahead to pattern number 12, which is on page 28 of your Make It From Your Heart Volume 3 how-to book. Now, you can see here with the pattern that <clears throat> this section through the middle of the layout here, this goes all the way through the middle of the layout, three inches down, and it's incorporating three by four inch photos, journaling boxes, and a little pocket scrapbooking card. If you look um, in the comments of my layout yesterday, Jenny Tyson um, has this book at home and she's actually already created this week's scrapbooking weekly challenge. Well done, Jenny. But you can see she has actually laid her layer out the way the pattern was intended <clears throat> with two portrait photos here on the right hand side. <clears throat> I have used here, I had an eight by 10 inch photo. Excuse me. I had an eight by 10 inch photo here um, and I had this four by six inch photo. So instead of having six three by four inch blocks, I've used these two photos. So the great thing that I love about the scrapbooking patterns is you can mix it up. You have to do math. It's so funny when Kayla started scrapbooking, she was like, I didn't think I was going to be doing math at scrapbooking. But you can actually um replace the photos with ones that suit your layout. You could also do three portrait four by six inch photos here if you wanted to. So it's entirely up to you. Um, so that is pattern number 12 from this week's scrapbooking challenge. <clears throat> so the papers that I've used girls for this week's scrapbooking challenge are the mix in paper packs. So the mix in paper pack is in every two month catalog and the thing that I love about the mix-in paper pack is that the colours and the patterns actually mix in with the other two featured paper collections in the book. So this month we're working with paper collection The Good Life for September. And then next month in October, we're going to be working with paper collection Home for Christmas. You've got your colour palettes along the top here for your paper collections and then every month in the two, or sorry, every two months in the catalogue, we feature a mix in paper pack. So you can see that these patterns and these colours are going to suit the colour palette for both of your paper collections in your mini catalogue, which I absolutely love. Now, the thing with your mix in paper pack, I've actually got one here. So let's pop this to the side. And you can see here, I've only used two four inch strips of paper on this layout. So <clears throat> this is a great layout if you don't have a lot of paper left over from a paper pack. So the mix in paper pack only has six sheets of paper. There are different designs on each sheet of paper here. And <clears throat> last night I realized that I really need to get two packs of mix in paper pack with each new catalogue that comes out. The reason for that being is that if I wanted to do a double page spread, it can make it a little bit tricky if the pattern I require is matching pieces of paper. So I did actually want to do a different pattern this week, but I didn't have enough of the mix in paper pack in order to do that. And then when I saw the, the pattern that we ended up doing, it worked perfectly for the photos. So you only get six sheets of paper um, one each of six double-sided designs. You've got your zip strip along the top as well. And then, of course, there is a coordinating cardstock pack to go with the mix-in paper pack as well. The thing I love about the mix-in papers is they're typically textured, so you will see lots of beautiful patterns, wood grain patterns, textured patterns. This one here is meant to look like cement or a, pave, a pavement. 
or a sidewalk. So I do really, I'm a huge fan of textured paper. You'll see me using that a lot. So we've used the mix-in paper pack this month um, for the <clears throat> layout. You can see I've got the two strips through here. And then I also wanted to use the September stamp of the month because most of you have actually qualified for this stamp set. So if you're a VIP customer, um, you can actually get the stamp of the month for free. So this stamp of the month is called Thoughtful Tokens. Every month we feature the stamp of the month in the back of your mini catalogue. So you can see here, um, this is available only for the month of September. You can purchase the stamp outright if you are not a VIP customer. You can buy the stamp set if you really like it. It's only available for that particular calendar month as well. So once a month is finished, you can't order that stamp set anymore. So you can purchase the stamp set outright for $35.50. But if you are a VIP customer with an $80 order in that month, you actually get the stamp set for free. So a lot of my VIP customers will spread their scrapbooking purchases out to make sure that they're doing an $80 order each month in order to get their stamp of the month for free. So that is a really great little tip there. Um, and you can qualify for your free stamp of the month, whether you place an order directly with me or whether you shop um, on my website. If you qualify for it, it will prompt you to add it to your cart. Now, <clears throat> I've done the stamping as a, fe a feature technique, and I've also done a feature technique of colouring these wood grain shapes. So there's quite a number of different wood grain shapes that we have available in our range. Um, these wood grain die cut shapes here are the coordinating shapes for the Good Life paper collection. And the thing that I love about the wood grain shapes is that they're actually flat. So there's no lumpy bumpies that's going to end up in my albums. Some of our embellishments are quite thick. So you'll note that the acrylic shapes are a thicker embellishment. You'll find your embellishments in your core catalogue, but also spread out in your seasonal book as well. So the ones I've used on my layout today are the wood grain shapes. So we've got some little butterflies here and then we've also used um, some of the leaves. You can see that I've coloured those leaves in with the green, one of the green pencils. It was sap green. And here I've coloured the butterfly in with a brown pencil, the dark timber brown pencil. So the thing I want you to think about with your wood grain shapes, <clears throat> you've got all these different colour embellishments all these coloured ones are acrylic, so they're quite thick. They will end up being what we call lumpy bumpy in your album. But the black die cuts and the wood grain die cuts are flat. The thing I love about the wood grain die cuts is that you can take any of these shapes or titles and using the Colorista coloured pencils, you can colour in your wood grain shapes and then you can basically coordinate your shapes with whatever paper collection you're working on all right so that's what i'm going to be demonstrating to you today these colorista colored pencils are actually new to the range so previously we had some watercolor pencils in our range some of you would have these watercolor pencils now the watercolor pencils are great for <clears throat> as they are watercoloring so you need to use a water brush or a paint brush with your watercolour pencils. They weren't so great for colouring or blending unless you were using the water. And sometimes I'm just not in the mood for mess and fuss. I know some of my customers don't like that either. So I'm really excited about a new colouring range. These pencils are from um, Spectrum Noir. So they're the same brand that do our tri-blend markers. You can get your pencils in individual sets. As you can see here, we've got the Natural Landscape pencil set that we're using today. And these have got all of your nature colours, your um, greens, your browns and your blues. You can buy your sets individually for $13 a set. We're going to be using the Bright and Vivid set for our October paper collection. Um, if you want all three sets, you can purchase it for a bundle and you'll save $2 there by getting the bundle and you'll get all three sets. <clears throat> so the natural landscape colour pencils, a little tip that I want to give you for this, I'm just going to grab my Versamat out. When you're doing your colouring, my tip for doing the colouring with your pencils 
is to leave the die cut in the carrier sheet because it's going to make it much easier for you to do the coloring of your die cuts rather than and in some instances it works really well but these are a really good cut so as you can see here some of the die cuts have actually started to fall out in my um in my pack here i'm just going to grab this little fence out and we're going to pop him back in because i do want to color um the fences today you've got this cute little windmill here so um if you can leave your die cuts in their carrier sheet because it's going to make it much easier for you to do your coloring with them in their sheet. <clears throat> I did punch the die cuts out last week and then it didn't work because they were really fiddly to try to color. So I'm just going to slide this colored pencil box open. All of your pencils are sitting here on a tray and I'm going to use the dark timber pencil. Now, the thing I love about these pencils, girls, is because they're not designed for watercoloring, the, <clears throat> the inside or the core of the pencil is actually a wax-based formulation. So this means that it's really good for layering of your colors, blending of your colors. It has a high quality pigment as well. So you're going to get a really vivid color lay down. And you'll note that while I'm coloring this, um, <clears throat> it ends up almost, you can almost feel it, it feels waxy when you actually run your finger over after coloring it. It does feel a little waxy. The color's not going to come off, so it is permanent as well, which is good to know. <clears throat> Another tip when you're doing your coloring is to color a, a, in line with the grains of your wood grain die cut shape. So you can see here that my lines are running up and down. So we're just going to color on that. And <clears throat> as I mentioned, I'm going to leave it in its shape. Now the reason in its um, carrier sheet, the reason why this is so handy to leave it in its carrier sheet is you can go over the outside of your die cut and it's much easier to color when it's sitting in its carrier sheet. Okay, so we're just going to colour over this. <clears throat> the other thing that's really handy to do as well with your pencils, girls, is if you're trying to match up your colours, what you can do is actually <clears throat> colour a little bit on the outside and then line that up next to your paper to see the colour match. So I did this with the die cut shapes for our weekly scrapbooking challenge. I actually tested out a few of the different greens to see which one would be better coordinating with the green paper I've used from my mix-in paper pack. Now, this is proving to be, I'm going to start on the outside here. So in terms of your colour, depending on the pressure that you are applying, you can do a really light colouring if you don't want it to be too heavy or you can apply pressure with your pencil and obviously the colour will come out a little darker. So it's really up to your preferred taste, but I do love that you've got these wood grain shapes that you can turn into any colour you want with the pencils. Now, I think this middle bit, I'm gonna colour from side to side and hopefully that won't look too obvious. If not, we can colour over where the colour is going to meet because it was a little bit trickier to colour that middle bit. I might have to go like this in individual strokes. <clears throat> Colouring is also a really fun technique for mindfulness as well. Okay, I'm just going to colour over those little bits there. And just here as well, I'm just going to blend this out a little bit. I'm just going over some of the bits. Perfect. Okay. Oh, that's just popped out there like so. So here we've got my little fence. And depending on obviously where that's going to go on your layout, you can see that that would look super cute down the bottom there. I could color this fence as well. That's my plan to do for another layout that I'm working on. You'll have to stay tuned for next week's scrapbooking challenge, girls. 
and you can see that we can line them up there like so. So you can see here I've colored with the green pencil over this die cut here and here and then the brown one over the butterfly. I chose the butterfly die cut shape just to match with my stamping and then I chose the leaves from the die cut shapes just to match the leaves also from my stamping. So now I want to do demonstrate. We're going to pop those colored pencils back into their carrier sheet and then we can slide them here into my box. My FedEx guy has just arrived with some boxes. How funny is that? I feel like every time I go live, my FedEx guy comes. <clears throat> Okay, so now I want to demonstrate the stamping here that I've used for you for this month's stamp of the month. Okay, so I've got my Versamat here. You want to make sure that you've got your Versamat out when you're doing your stamping. The thing I love about our Versamat is you've got this hard base here and then on the other side you've got a spongy base which is also for your stamping. Now, where this is important is that when you get a stamp set with us girls, there is a carrier sheet that's got your stamps um, on it. And then you've also got this foam insert as well, which goes over the top of your stamps to protect them when they're in storage. The back of your Versamat is designed to replicate this foam square. So when you're doing your stamping, you want to make sure that you've got your cardstock over the top of your foam square, okay? That would be this way. Sometimes I like to stamp on my mat with my foam square and then my cardstock. Or in other instances, if I'm stamping a border or something that is... <clears throat> Um, quite long on my page. I like to use my foam insert. Otherwise, I have, sorry, the back of my Versamat. Otherwise, I need to keep moving my foam insert along to make sure that my stamp is underneath that. When you purchase a stamp set or if you're a VIP customer and you get it for free, there is an insert inside here which tells you how to care for your stamps. So you want to make sure that when you're taking them off the carrier sheet that you're doing that gently. Um, especially for the first time because they're stuck on there really well. You just want to gently loosen those edges to avoid tearing the stamp. Um, and then we're going to take that off its carrier sheet and we are going to put it on a block. Now I'm using the three by three inch square block here, girls. Oh, you can see I probably could have done with the bigger block there. Um, I'm just going to move that over a tiny little bit. Okay, I probably could have done with the bigger block there. To help you decide which size block you need for your stamp set, every time you get a stamp set, girls, you just want to reference in your catalogue. It will tell you what size blocks you need for your stamp set. If you are new to stamping, um, there is a stamping starter kit in our essentials catalogue. The stamping starter kit looks a little bit different to how it looked some time ago. So if you've been scrapbooking me, with me for a little while, you might still be using the stamp spritzer and the stamp scrubber. We now have a stamp chamois, which is designed to help you to clean your stamps. And you're going to see me do that today. So the stamping starter kit comes with a little two by two inch size block and the archival ink, archival black ink pad, because these two items are the most popular to start with stamping and then you'll get your stamp chamois um, to help you to clean your stamps. Your stamp chamois comes in a two pack. So I've still got one sitting here in my bag. My other stamp chamois is sitting here in the stamp chamois case. So I've already wet my stamp chamois ready to clean my stamps. You're just going to run your chamois under cold water, running cold water until the chamois is wet. You'll squeeze that excess water out and you can see I leave mine sitting here in my stamp chamois case. We never had a case for the stamp chamois. And then so people were wetting their chamois and they were like, what am I supposed to do with this while it's damp? And so Close to My Heart manufactured a, an organiser for that for you to leave that sitting in and drying. So it dries out flat so it doesn't get all manky and smelly. I don't want you to be alarmed about the ink that you can see on the chamois. This will not transmit onto your blocks or onto your stamps. This is one that's been used quite well for cleaning. 
And so you can see when I'm ready to throw that one out, I've got my second stamp chamois here. Some of my customers even have one stamp chamois that they use for their water-based inks and then they use their second stamp chamois for their pigment inks, um, <clears throat> which is actually a really good decision. So <clears throat> I'm just going to sit that to the side there, ready for when I need to clean my stamp. So for those of you that are still using the stamp spritzer and the stamp scrubber, once the spritzer that you've got um, finishes, that was a specially formulated conditioner to help you to clean your stamps. Once that's finished, you'll need to transfer to the stamp chamois because the spritzer is no longer available um, for sale and we are just using the stamp chamois now to clean our stamps just with plain water, okay? So <clears throat> what I'm going to do here, I've got my cardstock here on my Versamat. I've got my stamp on my block ready to go. Before you use your stamp for the first time, you can condition that by inking it up and then stamping it on some scratch paper. Or funnily enough, when Close to My Heart started here 10 years ago, they showed us to condition the stamp by rubbing it on the inside of an arm like that. And it's just a habit that I've got into there. You want to condition your stamps so the ink will transfer evenly, okay? Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to use the toffee ink pad today to do my stamping. So this is one of the coordinating colours with the mix-in paper pack that I've used on my scrapbooking layout today. And it's also a colour that coordinates with this month's featured monthly paper collection, The Good Life. So the stamp pads come in 40 different colours. They are a magnetic case, so you can see that open up really easily. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to apply pressure my stamp into the ink like so, okay? Now, you don't need to rock the ink pad. That's really um, important not to do that. You don't need to rock it. You just need to give it a few taps into that ink, and you can see I've um, done that quite um, evenly. Um, the first time you use it, you might want to rub it over the base of your ink pad, so twisting that there, but you want to finish with a tap so your ink is not smudged. And all we're going to do here now is apply pressure and I'm going to stamp that down onto my cardstock. You've actually got grooves on the inside, on the outside of your block here. So that will help you to hold your stamp block really well. And you can see by applying pressure, making sure I've got either my foam square underneath or the reverse side of my Versamat, applying pressure onto that. And you can see I've got a really nice stamped image there. To clean my ink pad, I've got my wet stamp chamois here. So I'm just going to take that out of its carrier case and I'm just going to wipe that chamois over my stamp, okay? The thing that I do love about the stamp chamois is that it doesn't leave your stamps super wet. The spritz cleaner that we used to use, I found that it would get um, like quite... Um, not waxy, um, almost oily. It had like a conditioning element in the um, the cleaner. But I love that I don't end up with like that really oily texture feel over my stamps once I finish using it. So as, when you finish stamping, you want to wipe off your stamp to clean that. And then you're going to take that off its block and you're going to pop it back onto its carrier sheet like so. Okay. I'm going to demonstrate a couple of these other stamps here. I love this one. This one's got um, a French text pattern on it. Um, so I'm going to... Now, a, a good tip with these kind of stamps that are long and can be a bit tricky to get straight on the block, you can pop it upside down and then you can pick it up with your block like so. Oh, I still don't have that. Oh, no, that's good. Um on my stamp pad, on my um, block, sorry. So I'm using the, I'm going to use the espresso ink now. And again, you've got these grooves here, so really easy to handle your block. We're just going to ink that stamp up. Make sure that that's all good. I love this French one. So stay tuned for next week, girls, because I'm using this stamp on my um, weekly scrapbooking challenge for next week. That was in the Espresso, which is another coordinating colour for this month's featured paper collection. How cool is that? I love it. 
Love it, love it, love it. Oh, I've got Sue Robinson watching. Hi, Sue. Thanks for joining this morning. I didn't actually do a shout out of when I was going to go live. Um, I raced into the office this morning because some of our ink pad colours, which have been out of stock, have come back in stock. So I quickly raced in to do an order this morning and grab them before they left again. So I'm cleaning my stamp and I am popping that back on its carrier sheet. And then I'm just going to demonstrate the camera one because I have used the camera one in my <clears throat> layout here. So I've got single rows of the um, camera film under the three inch of the photo. I actually stamped this first and then put the photo around it. And I have two rows here because I'm going to be honest with you. I stuffed up the um, page and then I decided to pull it up and start again. And then I've ended up using that on my right hand side page. So I've got one row on the left and two rows on the right, but it doesn't matter. It looks awesome. I think the really cool thing about your heritage scrapbooking as well is that because it looks um, so old world and rustic, it doesn't kind of really matter when things are a little bit higgledy-piggledy. Alrighty, so I'm using the espresso ink again. And then with these longer ones, a good tip to ink these up is just to run it along the ink pad like so. Okay, I've got that inked up really nicely. And I think I'm going to stamp this um, through here. And then I might actually cut that off and use that for a layout. So I'm just going to apply pressure. So you can see because this is a long stamp, stamping on the back of my Versamat is much easier than getting my foam square and then actually continually trying to move that along um, the cardstock. Because this is 12 by 12 underneath, I'm getting a really nice <clears throat> even base there to stamp on. I'm just wiping that excess ink off, just running that down the edge of the stamp. Um, leave that sitting in my case there. I very rarely put my lid on my stamp chamois case, I have to admit. Obviously, if I'm transporting it between workshops or going on retreat, I will pop the, the lid closure over. But my preference is to actually leave that solid base sitting underneath the open base. The other night, I closed the lid over and I left it sitting face down with that open. And the next morning when I lifted that up, I had all this condensation on my table from where the stamp chamois was obviously breathing through the outside here. So I leave mine sitting in that harder case overnight um, while it's drying out. So I've cleaned my stamp. I'm popping it back on the carrier sheet and then I'll pop my foam square over the top of that like so and then I'll slide that back into my... envelope that the stamp set comes in there are organizers you can purchase for your stamp sets to keep them more organized but you can see here that's turned out really well I will probably cut this and I can use this on a layout here I just wanted to demonstrate that other stamp to you and another thing to keep in mind is that once that dries I'll show you the difference of the color here you can see here that that espresso is still quite dark as that color settles into the paper you'll note that that will change color so if you're not sure about an ink you can always do a test run first of all on some scratch paper and leave it to sit for a little bit and then see what you think about that um, afterwards so that's our technique tuesday for today girls coloring with the die cuts and also stamping um, on your layout for the embellishments, I used my Cozy Up Dots. So this was actually part of last month's featured paper collection. Cozy Up was in the July-August catalogue, but I had these leftover dots and I've used the um, Light Toffee. You can see that that coordinates really nicely. So I've actually used those dots here just to embellish. I've done them in groups of three in a sort of triangular motion here and I've put some on this side of the layout as well and then I've just ruled my lines to do my journaling with the sepia pen. So I hope you've enjoyed today's Technique Tuesday class girls. I look forward to seeing what you come up with this week. 
for our weekly scrapbooking challenge. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks for watching, Sue. I'll post this to the Facebook group so you can watch it back.